G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. I've had some unfortunate events occur to Reggie which means that he is not functioning. When I get him into game he gets down to about 3 frames per second which is why I've brought someone else in. That's right, I have taken control of Capac's PC so that I can use him. I'll use his PC to record the extra angle which means he needs to get rid of Reggie. There we go, now Capac's in his um, preferred position, seated and not doing a whole lot of anything. And I guess we'll have to see how these time lapses turn out because unlike Reggie, neither Steve nor Capac's PCs are in a convenient position for me to move their cameras during this recording. But they should be fine since most of what I'm going to be doing is working on this garage here. Now it was pointed out to me that I did something kind of stupid and it's a bit disappointing because the thing I have to fix is going to mean that this garage can't be the scale that I wanted it to be. I had always wanted it to be shorter than the production facility building. But it can't be. It needs to be as tall- uh oh, I need to drink. It needs to be as tall as it because I forgot about the dimensions of- ow. Because I forgot about the dimensions of the airtight hangar doors. Which is a little bit awkward. With the hangar needing to be seven blocks across, I'm obviously going to have to have the hangar door either two or four blocks high. Which means the roof is too low. And the reason it has to be four blocks high is because of the way airtight hangar doors work where they can retract two blocks in space. So I'm going to have this lower row embedded in the ground like this. Where have I got it again? There. Like this. And then the one on top will need to be above that upper block because you can see the bounding box of that lower placed one if I highlight it like this. So sure. that means we need to change up how I'm doing this. Just realized I may have wanted to um, grind off those bridges first. And bang. Down onto the floor. Oh, I hope that was an unknown signal that just went blammo. I heard that explosion. Uh, ugh. Yep, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have done that first. I needed to get rid of this first. And now that they're gone, I can place that other block back here, and then I can place that stair back there. It'll be another other block here. And then this other block is gonna go. Ow! 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 Is low. Oh! That was lucky. Oh man. That was some clang. <laughs> oh. Whoa. That was not good. I did not think that through. Oh boy. You almost killed me, little Mr. Stair. I'm gonna go inside where I can get some health back. Oh, that was close. I was so close to being really bad. I really hope either Steve or Capax PC caught that instance, because <laughs> that will be hilarious to look at from another angle. And then this armor block is gonna go. Ow! 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 Oh! Oh, I think I know why. I think I know why I can't depressurize that space. It's because I've got some O2H2 gens that are connected up with some ice in them. I reckon they're probably filling the tank. Right. I have a gap now. What should I do with the gap? Because I wanted to grind away that window. Pop in one of the in-between windows. And make this window another block taller since I've now got more height to play with. But how do I get stairs now? I think I know what I do. Just be sensible and do this. Little one and then I'm upside down and then do the stair on the next block. I'm doing scaffolding here because I am playing around with the design a bit more and it does... well, for the building phase like the designing phase, I do prefer having the scaffold around so that I can go up and down and up and down without having to 
use the Lifty. Plus, the Lifty is currently getting charged. So it probably could use with more time spent charging and less time spent using for right now. So now that I've got this up here, what I can do is I can place down the top half of the airtight hanger door so I know exactly where the door is going to be. I decided to bring it out to here because I'm going to extend the, hang the hanger out, the garage out, a little bit further. Just so that I don't... Well, just so there's possible chance that the Goofy 2 can fit in here once I have a more compact connector arrangement than this. If I ever need to work on it or do any upgrades on a truck that's that, slant, that is that length, which I think is potentially a thing that will happen, I want to make sure I can do it all inside the airtight space. That is looking a lot bigger, which is disappointing. I really didn't want it to be that tall. Uh, I almost think I need to make it wider now because it's so tall. I'll live with it now. I'll live with it. I think it'll, I think it'll work in the long run. All right, after much deliberation and a couple of false starts just there, let's do this corner. I'm going to, since we're going to be pretty tall anyway, I'm going to add the turrets to the corner. So we have a conveyor junction, then we have another conveyor junction, and we have a third conveyor junction right here. That will allow me to pipe along the inside wall, which should allow that turret to get piped up to the system. So we've got our conveyor junctions. The turret will sit immediately on top of this conveyor junction here. Ooh, I wonder how close you're going to get. I think I'll still be safe. And then, as I was saying before, what I can do, just to demonstrate it, is put something like conveyor corners along here. I could even possibly pipe them both down towards the back and then join along the back to go down the wall. And that will allow me to get ammunition to the turrets. It'll get me a bit more defense up here. Then what I was thinking, instead of having the wind turbines just set in of them like I've done on the production facility building, I might instead place three down the center. And the reason I'm thinking that is this turret setup is going to be different to the other ones. I think I need to have a light armor block there. Then we'll go with some 2 by ones Corner. No, can't be a corner because I've still got to cover up that below it. And then we can have the corner here. Out this side. We're going to go out another block. Or maybe not. Maybe we can get away with that. And... Oh, rats. So what I'm trying to work out here is how I can cover up those airtight hanger doors in a way that I'm happy with. Something like half slabs coming down the front here. And then two by one slopes across the middle. If I can actually get to that point, but I don't know if I can reach it from here. So something like that on the outside of the airtight hanger doors. I could go with a 2 by one slope, but what I need now is to fill in the roof. And I think what I need to do is ensure that I have those bridges the way I did them before, but at this height, this new height here, which is a block higher than they were. So I was thinking with this 2 by one slope here, maybe I could do some slabs down the middle? Might do just enough to differentiate the heights of these buildings so it doesn't look like I'm building to a standard recipe. Just something I always try really hard to avoid. Because I, ha I hate things looking too formulaic in my builds. I like them to look at least somewhat specialized to the task or... I guess even deliberately different? Maybe? I'm gonna go and... <clears throat> hurt myself while I try and get down the stairs. I was saying I was going to go back and have a look at this from a distance away to see how I feel about it and yeah as best as I can tell with all that framework which always makes it difficult I think yeah I think this kind of works. It certainly avoids the two buildings looking like they are together for the moment. Or at least I think it does. I'm going to kind of make a ridge down the center. Because what I'd like to do, even though I'm pretty comfortable for power, weirdly, 
um, is I'd like to add a couple of extra turbines just for some ongoing consistent power production. And since I'm planning on placing them down the spine, I want to place the spine first. I don't know what I'm going to do with the rear wall just yet. That's something I will leave open for a few options. So with these turbines, it's just like the other ones. I don't actually mind that they're going to be incredibly poorly productive. I just want them there because they are a nice additional bonus bit of power. 98.7 kilowatts. 90 and the other one I imagine will be 98 as well. 97.3. Alright, so that's an extra, you know, 270-ish kilowatts of power. That's something. It sure is something. And got to paint them the right colour. There we go. Secures my power a little bit and also keeps that consistency of having turbines on the top of our building. I don't think this one's going to get any solar panels. I think I'm just going to stick with the wind turbines on this building. For those of you looking at all of this and going, wow, this seriously splitsy, more white, rusty surface. Energy critical. Yes, for now, <laughs> more white, rusty surface. However, I'm thinking I will take a serious look at the paintwork sometime soon. I just don't want to do it today. I'm not feeling certain on what I want to do with the paintwork, but a lot of the rust interiors on the buildings are going to be redone, at least the bits I can do. But I do want mainly rusty white paint for the outside, at least at the moment. But I absolutely do have plans to not keep this as a single tone rusty base for the whole time it exists. It's going to get some more details and it will go and it'll get a bit nicer. Or at least a little more detailed. Even if it still looks brutal and ugly. Oh! Oh man, I was just standing here going, uh oh. I was standing here going, why isn't this thing working? I remember now, there was something I was thinking about while I was replying to the comments that I totally missed. Let's attach that to the head there so that it's actually helping and it's not part of the group either. So I've had to rethink some of the window design, unfortunately. Where I had it going all the way to the top, I can't actually do that because then I've exposed some of the conveyor block that's in there. Oh, and I'm such a dope. I can't have that going a- that- Arrgh! I hadn't thought through the conveyoring. This kind of bracing that's near the airtight hanger doors is going to have to move as well. What I may end up needing to do with that is drop it down a block. I don't know how I feel about, about that. Dang it, it's so hard getting the conveyors up to the corners of the buildings without having the conveyoring exposed. Which is unfortunate. All right, with the sun almost coming up, oh, the sun has come up. <laughs> I think it's time for me to try and get the roof done. I haven't completed the walls, but I've done the vast majority of them. I wonder if I can jump and do this bit. I just want to get the steel plates into that other window. Yeah, there we go. <gasps> no, it was the wrong type. Ah, oh, splits you idiot. I'm going to have to fix that. Dang it. Um, anyway. What I was thinking I would do now that the sun is coming up and this is mostly done is I'm going to build myself a bit of a stairway to get up to the top so that I can weld all of this roof bit without needing to use the liftsy. And then... I just need to build that rotor and build the camera rig and I can do stuff in here. I, I know I don't have a floor and I don't have the rest of it, but I just wanted to get the roof on so that I had that camera rig for building my next lifting vehicle. Although this one's not going to be lifting anything very high, it's just going to be kind of picking up chunks of stuff and moving it around. And I have a couple of interesting ideas for that. Yeah, that'll work if I can jump that. Should be able to, yeah, there we go. Huzzah! I can weld up the rest of the roof. Without having to use the lift C to go up and down. The main reason I didn't want to use it in this instance is because I need to take a lot of steel plate up there and it takes quite a while to go up and down. 
So if there's somewhere that I need to weld that's not moving around, it makes a lot more sense to not use the liftsy in those instances. And that was a little bit sketchy while I was chatting away there. <laughs> Much as I love using the liftsy, I do find that large areas of flat welding where I'm not really moving it around much, it's just literally becoming a lift to go up and down. Uh, it's not really where I like to use it. It's not as fun. It's kind of fun when I have to move side to side and do that sort of stuff, but when it's just up and down and up and down, it's, it's not the same. This lip here is something I'm going to have to be mindful of in deciding where I'm going to put the ladder. Or, yeah, it'll be a ladder to get up to the roof. I have been thinking about that, and one option that I quite like is maybe putting the ladder up to the top of the office bit and then a ladder up to the top here, which will mean I'll have to kind of cut a segment out so that I don't have that weird transition because the I don't really want that. Oh, even if I do get a little bit dizzy going up and down those spiral stairs. It's kind of a pity that piping up the turrets would take me almost, well, kind of take me too long. Because what I should really do in a situation like this is build the turrets first. Because then I have a cargo access point on the roof. And I can use it to keep collecting more materials, which would mean I'd be able to go up there once and then come down. But... Not an option, really. Well, not a great option in this instance, just because I need so much in the way of materials to create the piping for this setup. Okay, I have a roof. Time to get the Goofy 2 out of the way, bring the lifts inside, and build me a camera rig. That's quite close. I'm going to take the... You know what, I'm taking a break. <laughs> I'm going to go get that unknown signal, the absconder. I haven't taken it out in a little while. Hello, unknown signal. Hello, thirsty. Uh oh. I wonder if this has anything on board. No, get back. Oh, it's. On it. Oh, it's done for. Yay, rainbow surge. Uh, emergency rations, thank you. Wait, that's not water. Dang it! I want water! I suppose I just want to get that thruster, don't I? It's got the most useful stuff in it. Yes, 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 I know. I'm hurting. I'm hurting. I'm dying of thirst. I want to get this thing done and I want to, don't want to, to come back to it. Uh, kind of the rest of this is just steel plate, isn't it? I'm going to leave that beat. I'm going... Whoa, I'm going back. One barrel reverse downhill. Oh. <laughs> that was a little risky. Let's get home. Well, 54 meters a second might be a bit too quick. I got carrot seeds now. Maybe I can use the thingamajiggy, uh, the hydroponics. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how to use the hydroponics farm. <laughs> uh, small enclosed hydroponics. Turn you on? Uh, I would have thought the seeds would be where what I needed for that. Yes, not. Oh, if someone uh, can... I need to look at the guide. Alright, Goofy 2, time for you to move. Lifty, let's get you inside the garage. My first interior use of you. Turn on. Okay. Now it's going up. I want to be up to about... Yeah, that'll do. Just want to make sure that this has plenty of clearance for this little lip here. Come on. You can do a little thing. Yeah. It's kind of cool using this inside. There we go. Last time I used window blocks and I think they were probably the one of the better options I had available to me for trying to extend something without it casting too much of a shadow. 
This one, though, since it's inside... I will admit, I'm half tempted to put a camera on each side. So we don't just have one perspective, but I could theoretically get both PCs and have facing perspectives. So if I'm ever out of one shot, I can cut to the other. And they should transition kind of interestingly. I'm kind of tempted to do that, now that I've thought about it. Uh, so... What do I need? I'm going to use window blocks. I kind of need to drop that down low enough that it can go right out to the edge. Rather than hitting those 2 by one bases. Alright, let's have a look. See what we can do here. I have an idea. I think I'm going to leave it all scaffolding on it. Uh, the reason for that is I feel like this is the sort of thing that would be scaffolding. And so I feel like it'll look best that way. Hmm. I don't like that that's so skinny. It looks a bit strange. I'm going to... I think I'm... Uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. Uh, how am I going to get up there to do that, though? No. Let's go higher. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that 2 by one tip, and I'm going to put the slabs all the way along this. I think it's going to look a whole lot better if it's done that way. Part of the reason that I think this is going to look a lot better is that when I get to the transition down the end here, I'll have something other than a perfectly square edge to work with. And I think that's going to look a lot better. Yeah. I'm happy with that. And if I needed to now, I could actually get rid of those glass pieces underneath. I can put lights on this, so this has lights on it. But I kind of prefer the idea of this not being a giant disco ball so I probably won't end up putting lights on it. The reality is if I put lights on this while it might look interesting in the time lapse because the lights will follow the camera I think what will end up happening is that the lights will make the shots really flat and boring. And the other thing with this is I'm not going to run into that problem that I had with the previous camera of the actual camera block not being able to attach to glass blocks. Ooh, actually. This is where I could get a little bit tricky. I could make multiple cameras. I could have some that are set a bit higher that they... Oh! Yeah, I should take out one of these glass pieces and put a camera up the top so we can have a downward looking one. And then also have... Oh, I'm going insane here, but... Oh, I should totally make it so this thing has multiple cameras all over the place so that I can decide which angle is going to be best for whatever stage of a building I'm on. Obviously, because I wanted this camera rig, I can't do any sort of gantry crane that's attached to the ceiling because the camera took priority for me. Uh, but if you were playing on your own, I suspect a camera rig like this would not be <laughs> a thing you were, you'd be all that worried about. Uh, my needs are slightly different for obvious reasons. Okay, I think that's right. Yeah, they both look about the same. Cool. Done. Don't need to worry about putting the cameras on there yet because I don't have any means to record with that side at the moment. Oh, all right, so I just took out part of the floor. I think I'm going to try and put the floor in before I start doing too much of the crane vehicle. The main reason is so that I'm not building on top of this scaffolding. It'd be nice to have a bit of a floor in here and have somewhere to properly mount some lights because undoubtedly this build is going to take me a fair bit of time. And so I'm not always going to have the daylight to help me out. And when I say a fair bit of time, I mean in the next day cycle in, on this planet. So not like, crazy amounts of time, I hope. So I would like to get working on that drone very soon. Alright, we have a floor ready to build. Now, my plan with the building setup. I want to put an advanced rotor in the floor here and pipe it up down to here. I also want to put a connector at the back of the hangar, which will be piped up. And I was thinking about the stairs. I really should have planned to make them come up in the office since the office is going to be airtight. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. I think it's going to have to come up in the corner here, which is a bit sad. Um, yeah. I suppose I could kind of possibly make it like, dig down here and try and line up to that 
all underground and have the connection stairs come up here. Maybe? It's going to make the office pretty cramped. But I guess that does sort of work. The reason I wanted them to come up in the office is, if I've ever got these doors open, it means that I can still get into here, get into a control panel to close them, and then come outside once this is all pressurized. But... I guess I could do the same with a control panel down the bottom and, like, uh, maybe put some sort of indicator as to whether this is pressurized, if there's a way I can do that. I'll have to think about that one a bit more. But yeah, the plan was to have an advanced rotor here so that I can have it so that I could build from a thing that's piped if I wanted to, but more so that I could have it so that it's powered and any batteries on the thing I'm building get charged from the base while they're under construction. So, uh, for now I'm just going to place the rotor in the floor, but I'm expecting I'm going to have to grind that out when I dig out the floor to get that to be piped up. But for now this will work just fine. So all we're going to do is add a small head and rotor lock it. And now I'm connected up to the base and this new build will be powered from the beginning. So I think I'm actually going to go on and build this next time, but... Just to get a better idea of how large a chunk I'm going to need to move, let's ride down to that wreck and take a bit of a closer look at it. So I can have a bit of a think about how I want to arrange it as well. And I think that block is forever going to be... ...not welded, because every time I reload it seems like it's not welded up. Okay. So this rack is fairly small. Shouldn't be too heavy to lift either. Oh, that's quite badly damaged. I thought that large atmospheric thruster was more intact. No, oh, still got a bit in it. Uh, right. So. I need something that could lift that up. And I'm potentially thinking either a kind of U-shaped vehicle that the front wheels will go down either side. Like that and that. And then I can kind of just bring a crane down, lock it on, and lift it up nice and simply. So the mass of it is held between those vehicles. The other option I have is to build a heavier lifting vehicle. Something that could have a crane set somewhere in the middle or to possibly slightly toward the front. That can lean off the side, pick this up, and then move it over and pop it on like a flat bed. Uh, the trouble with a vehicle like that in this sort of setting is that I'll struggle to get it inside the garage and offload something like this in order to build from it. But the advantage of course is that if I put it on a flat bed that's lifted off the ground I'm not going to damage this anymore while driving it around and it's a lot easier to maneuver while I'm out and about. So I'm going to have to have a bit of a think over the next week to decide which way to go with that. And I would love to hear your thoughts on any pros and cons you can come up with for why I should do that one way or the other. I know a few people have already suggested the U-shaped design. Uh, but I do kind of like the aesthetic of the truck. Oh, there is another problem with the truck design. The truck design, I'm going to have to learn how to use MRM OS. <laughs> so if I decide to go with that one... I will need to find some time to learn how to use that properly because I love that script, I love what it's capable of. I'm just not capable of making it do those things. Yet. I hope that will change. Because I would really, really love to use it. It is one of the coolest crane scripts that I've played around with. Because it is so powerful. There we have it. A nice, new... Slightly under construction, but definitely more complete than it was. Garage. I will need to put some lights in before I can start getting on the build, but the build is going to happen right from the beginning of next episode. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then.